The Service Academy Swarm Challenge is designed so that we can go and explore a couple of different facets associated with both offensive and defensive swarm tactics. There are three ways that the teams are able to score points in the competition. There's the notion of air-to-air -air tags, there's also air-to-ground tags, and there's this third component which we call swarm logistics. The air-to-air -air tags is where a team might try to chase after an opponent aircraft and issue these types of fire messages that simulate onboard weapon type. The air-to-ground tag is the notion where an aerial robot would land in the opponent's home base, which we model with an inflatable target in the opponent's side of the field. The third type, which is called the swarm logistics points, really captures how quickly and how many swarm elements you're able to amass at one time. This rewards teams for being able to launch many aircraft at one time and see how long they can persist in maintaining that swarm strength throughout the competition. The battle arena comprises what we call the battle cube. This is 500 meters on a side, about 50 meters off the ground, and this is where the offensive and defensive play between the swarms actually takes place. And the whole nature of the game is to be able to not only land my UAV in your home base and capture your flag, but also to defend my home base by being able to tag your incoming aircraft. DARPA is providing two types of aerial robotic platforms. The first is a fixed wing aircraft, which has a number of advantages. It can move pretty quickly. It has longer endurance. But some of the challenges are that its maneuverability to station keep, for example, is pretty limited. And also the logistical challenges of launching fixed wing aircraft poses additional challenges. The second type of airframe is a quadrotor. These have the advantage of being able to hover. They're easy to take off and easy to land, easy to learn how to fly typically as well. But their challenge is now that they don't have the same endurance as the fixed wing aircraft. And so now there's this interesting trade space that one could explore. And in fact, the Service Academy students have to go explore. Do they want the endurance and the speed of the fixed wing? Or do they want the logistics advantage and the agility that the quad rotors are able to provide? DARPA has provided 20 fixed wing and 20 quad rotors to each team, and each academy is now responsible for composing their team roster of 25 drones. So they get to bring 25 aircraft to the battle, and they can now design that force mixture between quad rotors and fixed wing, depending on not only what their tactics are capable of executing, but also what they expect their opponent to bring to the battle as well. We're less interested in the individual robots themselves, we see a lot of commercial and academic development in those areas. What we're really trying to push the boundaries on here is how we actually use these swarms to do meaningful things. So what I like to call swarm tactics, how can we start thinking about swarm plays like you might on a football or a soccer field and use that to do more interesting, operationally relevant things. One sample swarm tactic that DARPA has provided to help plant the seed and inspire the cadets and midshipmen in developing their own swarm tactics is what we call Greedy Shooter, which essentially is a simple tactic where each aircraft goes after the nearest opponent closest to that aircraft. That allows for an entire swarm team to allocate and assign which opponents to go chase after for a given engagement. A second type of swarm tactic that DARP has provided is what we call Smart Shooter, which builds upon the Greedy Shooter where now, instead of only going after the opponent that's closest to me, I can collaborate and coordinate with my teammates to deconflict, which means we're not all chasing the same opponent at the same time, and that increases our effective ability to perform the air-to-air -air tagging as a team. Using some of these example swarm tactics, as well as those of their own design, coming from the creativity that we expect to come from the Service Academy students, They'll be designing their own swarm tactics and we're eager to see what they bring to the battle at Camp Roberts and demonstrate in LiveFly. Being out in the field is dramatically different than learning from a textbook in the classroom. And I think that's one of those key pieces of this that will expose the cadets and midshipmen to both the opportunities and the learning experiences as well as the challenges of going out to the field and conducting these experiments. Hey. There you go.
Beyond just the swarm tactics that we're eager to have the service academies develop, there are a whole slew of logistical challenges that the cadets and midshipmen will also face as they try to embrace the swarm technology. Some of those challenges include the transport, maintenance, and upkeep of large numbers of these robots that are provided to them. One of the other challenges is how quickly they can launch these aircraft. One of the limitations right now is in the endurance of these aircraft. They're using commercial off-the-shelf batteries anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes at a time. And by the time they've launched the last aircraft, it's possible that the first few aircraft already had to be landed. So can they not only think through some of the challenges of how they deploy these systems, but how can they design tactics that best leverage the capabilities that we do have while anticipating what might happen if we had new capabilities in the future. The technology is changing so quickly that in some ways, if you're not out there hands-on, it's very easy to have your knowledge become stale or obsolete. And so this is, uh, by design, a, an effort to go and encourage, if not require, that the cadets and midshipmen go out there and test on a regular basis, not only to learn, not only to advance, but also to develop some of that muscle memory that one needs to be able to execute these types of swarm systems. Mm -hmm.